Hi guys, design time again. So, what's all this stuff here? Pits and pieces. Well, all these things that you see have to do with the second part of my grid tip meter video series. And this is the part where I show you my, my design of the Digitip, digital grid tip meter. But I designed, I don't know, 2019, 2018. And then I was got bored or personal problems came, uh, COVID came, blah, blah, and I forgot it. I got other things more interesting that I got more interested in and this left, I abandoned it. But now it's time to revisit it and to show it to you because perhaps somebody is interested and perhaps somebody is interested in continuing the development based on what it is at the moment here. So let me show you what I have here. First of all, the idea is based on a design from Elm. It's a Japanese developer. I took the idea from him I took some ideas from him, completely redesigned it, completely new software. The power part is completely new. You will see there are many, many, many changes that I made. And that was for the time for me, the best solution to go. Uh, the idea of the whole digital deep meter, what you see here, or the parts, <coughs> sorry, are to make it as modular, modular as possible. So not just to have a base unit and only to change the, the coils, but um, to make it even more versatile, I made the base unit that you see here, I will show it to you in more detail in, in a second, and the oscillator plugins. And then you on the oscillator plugins you have the uh, the coils, the different coils. So let me show you the base unit. Let's start here. Okay, and I have always problem with the zoom. I don't know with the iPhone. This is how the base unit looks. In part of it is are way, way over-engineered. And I will show you which ones and why I did it what I did. So let's start from the power part. The digital dip meter can be powered in three different ways. It can power it from a nine volt battery from the nine volt battery, uh, I use only, I, I have here on this, this board, two DC-DC step up converters. One of them from, to get the, the base nine volts I'm using to down convert everything else from, for example, a LiPo battery. And the second one is to generate the higher voltage, this voltages needed for the very cap tuner, for the very cap diodes. For example, from one to 28 volts, everything that either came from the five volt uh, USB or the LiPo or the nine volt. So you have three possible powering methods. The USB itself, five volts, that from this USB, um, everything is converted again to nine volts because nine volt is my base voltage to down convert everything else. The second uh, source is a LiPo battery with this 4.2 uh, volts, again, gets step up to nine volts and a nine volt battery. If you have a nine volt battery, then a lot of stuff is omitted. You don't need it. Uh, 
Additionally, I'm using here LiPo batteries like this. It's, uh, I think, 1200 milliamps, milliamps, yeah, something like that. It's, these are probably from some phones, older mobiles. I got a lot of them from a German distributor, very, very cheap, and I'm using them. I have a lot of them. This is where I'm using them. This goes here. Let me zoom back. This goes here, or a 9 volt battery would go here. You have these battery, these uh, lithium polymer cells are not protected. So I have here the protection circuit, I have the charging circuit with a TP4056. Standard protection circuit with is CW01 and 8205 double MOSFETs. But now we come why this thing is over engineered. Because at the time that I was building this, uh, I wanted to test two new ICs I got. The one of them. It's a FTDI, a special one that has a um, charger detection. This is a USB to a serial bridge with a charger detection. It is programmable externally with a software from FTDI and has GPIOs. What, is, what this thing do, does, not only it makes the bridge from USB to serial TTL, but it uh, detects if this thing is connected to a USB to a, to a PC or a, cap a more capable charger. That means if it detects a charger, I programmed the program is made like that that I programmed to have two, one, two GPIOs go low. The one of them lights and. Um, the, the this this LED here and the second one parallels a resistor to the current set to the current set resistor of the charging chip. Without this paralleling, you will have 100 milliamps of charging current. If I detect if the chip not me. If the chips detects a BCD charger, a, a dedicated charger that can do more, it parallels this resistor to the first one. And that means the chip now is charging with one amp. A toy, I know, not necessary, but this board here, what you see, is not only made for a Dip for my dip meter, but also as a development board for this IC. And for the first time that I used the XS3608, something like that, I will show you in, in, in the data sheets, uh, step up converter. It has an input voltage of 1 to 24 volts and output of 1 to 28 volts. Perfect. So the idea was, what do I have to do to make this thing as quiet as possible, as noise-free as possible? This is why there is filtering upon filtering upon filtering. I'm using an LC filter with uh, here not, because this is the Viricap, the Viricap voltage, but on the 5 volt that goes to the CPU, it is double filtered with an LC filter. This is the this is the LC filter and with a ferrite bit and a capacitor. And after that, an LDO that converts the nine volt to five volts. So this is more or less yeah. And I have a two color um, LED that shows me charging or standby. The whole thing is turned on and off with that beautiful switch. 
This shows me if it is turned on if or off, power. But that does not, uh, that does not um, influence the charging uh, circuitry. As long as the USB is, is connected, the charging circuitry is working independently of the, of the setting of the switch. Okay, let's go from left to right, from right to left. As a as a microcontroller, I'm using the venerable Atmega. Let's see it better. I hope you can see it. Atmega three to eight. At the end, it's nothing else as an Arduino Nano or an Arduino. Uh, as a display, for now, for the, the software, the, the, the basic software that I wrote is using a. a and character display, 12 lines by 16, 16 characters with a converter on the back that makes the parallel 4-bit operation, operational display uh, understand I2C. So I'm using I2C for that display. But because I planned this software to be open, open software, I broken out completely, not only the ICSB, so you can make the initial bootloader configure, uh, bootloader upload to the microcontroller, but this connector can be used as a SPI, SPI ser Serial Peripheral Interface, uh, TFT or OLED display, if somebody wants to make the software. And of course, the I2C that can use any I2C LCD display or any other display. So this is the digital part. Uh, of the the digital, the, my digital tip meter not only shows you as a bar graph the level of the oscillation and then the dip but it shows you the frequency quite accurate to in up to three decimal points. For that, all this here, what you see is more or less a part of the prescaler uh, of, for the frequency counter, for the software frequency counter that is, that, that is, uh, that I'm using here uh, on, on the Arduino on the at, at mega chip. The at mega chip, the frequency counter um, goes maximum up to seven megahertz. This is a little bit um, disadvantage compared to the peak chips that, for example, that, that uh, can use an input, I think up to 50 megahertz here yeah, with internal dividers, etc. This thing cannot do that. You need external dividers. So uh, the software that I'm using, it's not from me. It is a, a library, a very nice library that I'm using. Goes apps up to seven megahertz, but just to be sure, I'm using only somewhere in the middle, three something megahertz. The rest happens here with dividers. And you have the concept is that you have a low frequency part that goes from one to 30 megahertz and a second input, one input, one to 30 megahertz and the second input from, I don't know, 30 and above to 250, 300, 400 megahertz. Everything that is up to 30 megahertz is going through this part here is going through, first of all, through this amplifier, yes. It looks like a digital chip, but it is used as an, an analog amplifier. There are quite a lot of stages here, what I'm, what I'm doing. Uh, and then it's go squared and divided and goes to the microcontroller. Everything that is higher than that, the Division by forty by sixty four 
prescaler is used this 501 chip this is quite an old chip but it works very well here you have the level detector diodes etc so there are two or perhaps three potentiometers that are used here the first one is the sense the sensitivity potentiometer that is the amplification that sets the amplification of the signal and the tuning that sets the frequency additionally of course there are a lot of other uh, options here i provided a third one that could change the gain of the oscillator of the oscillator plugins another option here is that that you can populate at the moment it's not populated a pilot tone i'm using a i think a one kilohertz pilot tone or something like that sine pilot tone that i'm uh, that i'm modulating the oscillators here this is switchable and you have a dedicated uh, led that shows if it's on or off uh, by the way guys if you like what you see if you like my videos please consider subscribing my channel press the like button ring the bell the notification bell this help, this helps a lot to grow the channel and helps me to show you more of my of my designs and other things that i have for you so now this is how it looks from the back not much it's quite a lot of stuff but it is not that difficult to make you see how old it is 19 i started with that way further but this is the second version the first version I used 0805 resistors and to be honest they were way too big I didn't like them at all but I have I have so many reels of them I said I said okay let's make it easier for the people that want to 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 construct it to make to make it eventually and use 0805 yeah I made one with 0805 I tested it and I threw it away I didn't like it at all this is everything 0603 because my standard of the SMD, of the passive components, except of specific reasons of power or other reasons, is 0603 and 0402. That's it. They are easy enough to, to solder, and this is what I'm using, and it gives me a lot of a lot of free space. For example, here you see 06. Twelve oh six. This is because yeah, this is the capacitors. The problem with the ceramic capacitors are that uh, the capacity changes with the size. For example, if you have a ten megahertz capacitor and uh, <laughs> sorry, ten microfarads capacitor. First of all, it's dependent on the material, on the ceramic material. X five R X seven something etc these are quite okay materials but still they are voltage dependent and size dependent yeah this is why for if you use if i use capacitors and switch mode power supplies etc i'm using at least 1206 or many of them in parallel or even even larger uh yeah but this is not what i wanted to tell you I wanted to show you from here we go for example to one of these oscillators oscillator boards and these oscillator boards are made in a way that they can fit hmm, let's zoom out again that they can fit in this enclosure so let's see if i can open it with my nails ah hurt it but it this is how this thing works you put it there it's very difficult with the camera because i don't see what i'm doing uh, 
huh? and you close it. And this is how it looks. And here you put the coil. Of course, the coil shouldn't stay like that. It will be smaller and more steadier, etc. But this is the idea how you connect everything. All this stuff you get on AliExpress. But this one, I didn't manage to get uh, only the, the cases themselves. I had to buy them. These are some kind of converters that you have from sub-D connectors to screwable term terminals. So, but they are cheap, so I bought a bunch of them, and I'm using only the, the, the cases and eventually the sub-D 9-pin connectors. Okay, here we have one of them. I have made quite a few of them different ones, as you can see here. This one, this, this both, these two are the same design, but for different frequencies. On the left side, you see two varicaps, bigger ones. They are, are a lot, they give a lot more capacity, up to, I think, 400 picofarads or something like that, and are for the low frequencies. And on the right side, you see these ones, these are the varicaps, these are for the higher frequencies. These two oscillators, boards, I use FETs or MOSFETs. As you can see, I have provided pads or a place for both. Either I use a MOSFET or a FET. I think here I use a MOSFET, a SOT233 MOSFET. And this is the detector diode. You have a F-select jumper that is set on the high frequency and open in the low frequency. That signalizes the processor how to use, uh, which divider ratio to use. And Again, we have high frequency and low frequency. This is to for the two inputs I have here, the high and low frequency. This just selects the correct input, that's all. So all these, why I did so many of these oscillators, you see they are, they are going further, because I was not very satisfied with the stability, with the amplitude st stability versus frequency. I wanted something that has a stable frequent, a stable amplitude for, for all the range, all the tuning range. And I tried a lot of circuits, culpits uh, with MOSFETs, culpits with, example, I think, yeah, this is with a, uh, bipolar transistor. Sorry, I didn't clean it. Oops. Um, this is with a negative resistance, I think. It is a quite weird design, but I tried it. It works quite good with the stability, but it's very, very narrow band. So it is only useful for some special occasions. But the, the concept is I can make everything what I want on that from oscillator or something else what I need so that I can use the base unit for something else too. The last one of the, the last design that I didn't even populate it because as I told you, I abandoned it at 19 already is a um, quite versatile design of the oscillator. It's more a breakout board and, and, and development board that 
Now I use, uh, after the oscillator stage, I'm using a buffer stage, either an, uh, uh, so that the, when I connect the output of the oscillator here to the, to the input of the base unit, it is with a low Z and it's not loading the oscillator but I never tested it. So this is something that if somebody wants, can continue testing it. Yeah. What I want to say is that for the moment, this thing is frozen. I'm not going to, I'm not planning to develop it further. It is working. You will see that it's working. I will show it to you. But uh, yeah, this is frozen in time. So I'm willing for everybody that is interested, anybody that is interested on developing this thing further to give the complete design files of everything, even the layouts. So somebody can continue it, the software, everything. The software is at a stage, as a stage that it works, but it's not refined. So let's have a look now on the on a few ICs I'm using. So here we have the uh, UART to USB bridge, but this thing is a special chip because it has a charger detection. This is I tested it for the first time. It works perfectly and it's programmable. Uh, a lot of information here. All of this information I would give away, even the programming of this chip, everything. So anybody that is interested, really interested to continue developing this, uh, this project. And this is my second chip. This is my up converter. I love this thing. Very small, a very low component count, parts count. It is easy to get clear noise, to, 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 to get it clean from no means of noise and ripple with low pass filters for the noise and uh, ferret beats for the, for, uh, sorry, the vice versa. Uh, low pass filter for the for the for the ripple and uh, ferret beads for the noise. I'm using th this since then almost everywhere, except if I need some more some higher voltage and 28 volts at the output. Okay, let's have a look how the the whole caboodle of, of PCBs that I have here is working. So everything connected. Yeah, it looks like a spider, I know, but this is part of the development. I connected the USB on the USB cable, the micro USB, and I will connect now the USB B on a PC port. You heard enumeration and it's charging, the battery is charging, but the LED here, the BCD LED is not lit because the chip now knows that we are on a PC USB port and not on a dedicated one, a dedicated charger. Okay, now I'm putting it on a charger. Yeah, a little bit out of camera here. Check. And the chip automatically detects the charger. If the charger, of course, it's correctly built here. Yeah? So let's start it. This is how it looks. The frequency 
is set by this potentiometer. And here you can see the frequency, the, the, the oscillation level changes with the frequency. This is something I never managed to stabilize, but it is on the other deep meters too. So this, the combination of this oscillator uh, add-on and this uh, coil goes from 28 megahertz up to 50. And here you can see 50 megahertz and 50 megahertz. Let's go down to 28. 28 megahertz. 28 megahertz. This thing, the, the frequency counter is quite, quite accurate. So this is the state that I'm using at the moment of the software. You see the frequency, the tuning, and the uh, and the amplitude. So I turned off the light to see the uh, the display better. Now I'm sweeping. I'm using this resonance circuit. This is now somewhere at 40 megahertz, I think, or 30 megahertz, I'm not sure. Going up, no, it's not. Slowly going down, ah, we have a dip, you see? Here, 42 megahertz, more or less. Of course, this potentiometer would be a multi-turn. You can see the dip. When the dip occurs, then the frequency of the oscillator equals the, the resonant frequency of the LC circuit. You see the dip? And this is how it is coupled. So, this is more or less what I wanted to show you for my design. All the design files, the software, everything is available on request. And if Really, if somebody is really interested in continuing the development of this project, I would give even the layouts. The layouts and the design files, they complete the, the Eagle files. It's made in Eagle. I would give everything out, even the configuration files for this FTDI chip, everything. Uh, so just contact me, tell me if you're interested. And if you're interested to continue it, if you want just to, to, to build it, I will give you all the necessary design files so you can build it in the software. Guys, that's for today. Hope you liked my video. I want to thank you for watching my videos. I want to thank all my subscribers, my current and future subscribers. Please, guy, guys, uh, hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, so you can have information, you can have a notification of when new videos are put online. All these things help me or help the, final, the, the, the channel to grow and help me to show you more of these things and give you more content. Okay, thanks again and cheers.